Hello students, I am Azizi, Professor Electronics. In our previous session, we have developed a circuit of microcontroller using MCS51 family member that is 889C51 microcontroller. Up till now, we have learned the assembly language programming using some LEDs and switches and now we'll use an alphanumeric LCD from Hitachi to interface with our microcontroller circuit and we will learn further assembly language programming using 889C51 microcontroller and LCD. So let's start today's session. Here we can find the microcontroller based circuit that we have developed during our previous sessions and we have connected 8 LEDs on port 0 and we have connected 3 switches on port 2 and we have learned that how to develop an assembly language program using 889C51 microcontroller and using microvision keel compiler. Now here in this session we will learn that how to connect an alphanumeric LCD on port 0 and how to display different text and numerical values on LCD display. So first we will check that what we have written in our previous program and how we have developed this project. Here we can find the value of the counter on port 0 is 0 and we have connected 3 switches on port 2. Increment switch that is switch 1 is connected on port 2.0. Decrement switch that is switch 2 is connected on port 2.1 and the reset switch that is switch 3 is connected on port 2.2. If we will press switch 1, our counter will be incremented by 1 and if we will press switch 2, our counter will be decremented by 1. So let's check. Here we can check the counter is decremented by 1 and if we will press the switch once again, here we can check the value is now 1 and if we will press the switch 3 and here we can check the value of counter is 0 now. It means that the value of counter is reset to 0. Here we can observe two more things that is the debouncing delay for the decrement switch and reset switch is quite long. So in our next program, we will modify the debouncing delay for switch 2 and switch 3 and we will make the debouncing delay for these two switches short. The second thing is that all of three switches are working on rising edge. That is if we will press the switch, nothing will happen. But when we will release the switch, the action will be performed. Here we can check if we will press the switch 1. Here we can check no increment is there. But if we will release the switch, our program will increment the counter value by 1. Here we can check when the switch is released, the counter is incremented by 1. Let's check once again. No increment is there. If we will release the switch, when we have released the switch, the counter is incremented by 1 and now the value of the counter is 2. If we will press the switch once again, now the value of the counter is 3. Similarly, if we will press the switch 2, no action will be performed. But if we will release the switch, the counter will be decremented by 1. Let's check. We have pressed the switch, no action is there. And when we will release the switch, the counter will be decremented by 1. Similarly, if we will press the switch 3, no action will be performed, but when we will release the switch, the counter will be reset. Let's increment the counter up to its maximum value. And here we can check the maximum value of the counter that we have written in our previous program. Now we will observe the action of the reset switch. When we will press the reset switch, no reset action is performed. And when we will release the switch, the reset action will be performed. Here we can check when we have released the switch, the counter value is reset to 0. In our current program, all three switches are working on rising edge. But in our next program, we will perform all the tasks on falling edge of these switches. And we will reduce the debouncing delays of switch 2 and switch 3. And here we can find the program that we have written in our previous session. We have defined some variables here. We have defined some constants. We have written ports assignments, flag assignments and bit assignments. And here we have written the directives. And we have written an initialization routine and the main routine. And in main routine, we are calling four subroutines that is increment routine, decrement routine, display routine and reset routine. And after calling all four of these subroutines, our program will jump to the main again and it will continuously perform the task that we have written in our program. And here we have the increment routine. Here we can find the decrement routine, the display routine and the reset routine. Before interfacing an alphanumeric LCD with our project, first we'll learn some basics of the alphanumeric LCD. Then we'll develop a circuit to interface the LCD with the microcontroller. Here we can find different types of alphanumeric LCDs from Hitachi, that is HD44780. LCD stands for liquid crystal display. And we can find the alphanumeric LCDs in different configurations. That is 20 cross 4 LCD, which has 20 columns and 4 rows. We can write 4 rows on the LCD. And we have 20 columns to display different characters on this LCD. And here we have 8 cross 2 LCD. It means 8 column 2 rows. And here we can find the interface connector to connect this LCD with our projects. And we can also find the details of these connections in the data book. 
and we can find 20 cross 2 LCD that is 20 columns and 2 rows, 40 cross 4 LCD that is 40 columns and 4 rows, 16 cross 4 LCD that is 16 columns and 4 rows, 16 cross 2 LCD that is 16 columns and 2 rows and here we can find a particular page from the data sheet of HD44780 alphanumeric LCD and here we can see the instruction set that is the code to initialize the LCD and how to write the data on the LCD with the timings required to execute each command and here we can see the different command that is clear display, return home, entry set, display on off, cursor or display shift, function set, set CGRAM address, set DDRAM address, read busy and flag address and here we can find the time to execute the command that is return home which is 1.52 millisecond. It means that 1520 microseconds and here we can find the second command that is entry mode. It requires 37 microseconds to execute this command. Similarly, we can find all the timings required to execute different commands and here we can find the default configuration of the commands. Number one, the display clear. Second, the function set. Third is display on off control. Fourth is entry mode. And here we can find an important instruction regarding HD44780 LCD. That is the busy state lasts for 10 milliseconds after VCC rises to 4.5 volt. It means that whenever we will power up our circuit, we will wait for at least 10 milliseconds for internal initialization of this LCD. It means that we cannot send any command to the LCD before 10 milliseconds whenever we will switch on our circuit. And here we can find different commands to initialize the LCD and we can find the relevant bits of data port that is from DB0 to DB7. If the value of DB0 will be 1 that is clear display and the execution time for this command is 1.52 milliseconds. Similarly, if the value of db1 will be 1 and db0 is don't care in this case, the command is cursor home and if we we'll set the value that is db1 as 1, it means the value that is 2 on data port of the LCD, that is cursor will be moved to the home position that is 0 row and 0 column and the execution time for this command is also 1.52 milliseconds and here we have the third command that is entry mode. To implement this command, the value of the bit that is db2 must be 1 and here we can find the function of db0 and db1 in entry mode set that is i oblique d and s. If the bit that is db1 will be 1, it means we are in entry mode set and here we can check if i oblique d is 0, it means decrement cursor position and we can also check from the data sheet if i oblique d value will be 1, then increment cursor position function will be performed and for db0 bit in entry mode set we have a function that is s, if s will be 0, no display shift. If s will be 1, then display shift function will be performed. After entry mode set, we have another function that is display on off control. For this, the value of the db3 bit must be 1 and here we can find three functions that is d, c and b. db0 corresponds to b, db1 corresponds to c and db2 corresponds to d. And here we can find the function of the d. If the status of the d will be 0, then display will be off. And if the status of the d will be 1, then display will be on. And then we have the function c for db1. If the status of the bit that is C will be 0, then cursor will be off and if the status of the bit that is C will be 1, then cursor will be on and here we can find the cursor is on under this character but if we we'll set the status of the C as 0, then no more cursor will be displayed on LCD display. After C, we have another function that is B corresponds to DB0. If the status of the B will be 0, then cursor blink will be off but the status of the B will be 1, then cursor blink will be on. After display on of control, we have another command that is cursor display shift. For this, the value of db4 bit must be 1 and here we have two functions that is s oblique c and r oblique l and the value of db0 and db1 are don't care. Here we can find if s oblique c will be 0 then move cursor but if the status of s oblique c will be 1 then display will be shifted and then we have r oblique l here we can find if r oblique l will be 0 then shift left function will be performed and if the status of the r oblique l will be 1 then the function that is shift right will be performed. After cursor and display shift, we have another command that is function set. For this, db5 must be 1 and here we have three functions that is dl, n and f and again in this command db0 and db1 are don't care. Here we can find db5 is 1 and we have three functions that is dl, n and f and here we can find the function of dl if the status of the dl will be 0. It means we want to interface the LCD on four bits but if the status of DL will be 1, it means we want to interface the LCD on 8 bits that is from DB0 to DB7. But if you would like to interface this LCD on 4 bits, then we will use DB4, DB5, DB6 and DB7 as interface bits and from DB0 to DB3 will remain unconnected. 
and here we can find the function of the n bit that is if the status of the n bit will be 0 that is 1 over 8 or 1 over 11 duty one line but if the status of the n will be 1 it means 1 over 16 duty two lines and here we can find the function of the f bit that is if f will be 0 it means that the character size will be 5 into 8 dots but if the status of the f bit will be 1 then the character will be developed by 5 into 10 dots and here we can find the dot pixels to develop a character and we can develop characters using 5 into 8 dots or 5 into 10 dots and here we can find the names of the interface pane and how to interface this LCD with a microcontroller here we can find number one pin is ground the second is VCC third is contrast pin and how to control the contrast of the display we can use a variable resistor connected with the 5 volt at the ground and we'll connect the wiper of the variable resistor to the VEE pin and here we can find pin number 3 is VEE, pin number 4 is RS that is register select, pin number 5 is RW that is read write, pin number 6 is enable, pin number 7 is data 0, pin number 8, data 1, 9, data 2, 10, data 3, 11, data 4, 12, data 5, 13, data 6, 14, data 7 and here we have two pins that is LED plus and LED minus. If you would like to switch on the backlight LED, we can connect the backlight LED in this manner. We will connect a 1 watt 330 ohm resistor with anode of the backlight LED and the second end of the resistor will be connected to the 5 volt and the cathode of the backlight LED will be connected to the ground and here we can find the commands that how to read and write the data to the LCD. So if you would like to write the data on CG RAM or DD RAM, then the status of the RS pin must be set to 1 and the status of the RW pin will be 0 and on a falling edge on enable pin, the data will be returned to the CG RAM or DD RAM but if the status of the RS pin will be 1 and status of the R oblique W pin will be 1 then on a falling edge on enable pin we can read the data from CG RAM or DD RAM and here we can find the character addressing for the LCD from Hitachi that is HD44780 and here we can find a LCD that is 20 cross 4 it means 20 columns and 4 rows the starting address of the first character that is first row and first column we can find the address is 80 then 81, 82, 83 up to 93 the address of this character position that is 9 is 93 here we can find the address of the first character that is first row and first column is 80 so here we have the first character and here we can find the first row and first column and here we can find the character that is 20th column and first row and the address of this character is 93 and the address of first row and first column is 80 similarly we have first column and second row the address starts from C0. Then we have first column and third row. The address starts from 94. And we have first column and fourth row. The address starts from D4. We will use the same addresses that is ATH to display the data on first row and first column. We will use C0 to display the data on second row and first column. We will use the 94H to display the data on third row and first column. We will use D4H to display the data on 4th row and 1st column and now we will save this circuit with a new name and in our new circuit we will interface a 20 cross 4 LCD with our microcontroller. So first we will save this circuit with a new name, save project as. So here we will save this project with a new name that is 889C51 microcontroller underscore LCD project. So here we will write that is LCD underscore project ok save and now we'll remove these components that is u2 uln2803 and all 8 leds from our circuit and we'll interface the lcd with this port that is port 0 so right click so here we have removed all the components from our circuit that are not required in our project now we'll go to the components, go to the parts and here we will write that is LCD and here we can find LM044L a 20 cross 4 alphanumeric LCD and now we'll select this component, OK and here we can find the component that is LM044L in our component bin. And now we'll select this component and we'll place it here. First we'll connect the pin number 1 that is VSS to the ground. The second pin that is VDD will be connected to the 5 volt. The third pin which is VE will be connected to a variable resistor. Here we will write that is pot potentiometer. 
and here we can find port HD that is active device. So we will select this component. Okay. And now we'll connect the data pins of the LCD with the port 0. Here we have connected all 8 data pins of the LCD with the microcontroller. Now we will connect 3 control pins that is RS, RW and enable. So we will connect these pins with the microcontroller using labels. We will assign the labels to these pins. Right click, place fire label and here we will write that is RS and we will write that is RW. And we'll connect these three control signals with port 2, that is from port 2.3, 2.4 and 2.5. Okay, here we have connected the LCD with the microcontroller, that is the data port with port 0 and three control pins with port 2. Eight data pins, that is D0 to D7 are connected to port 0.0 to port 0.7 and three control pins, that is RS, RW and enable are connected with port 2, that is from port 2.3. 2.4 and 2.5 and we have connected VSS, VDD and VE pins as required to drive this LCD. So here we have connected LCD with our microcontroller that is 88 c 51 In our next session we will learn that how to display alphanumeric characters on this LCD. That is how to display the text data and numeric data on this LCD. Thanks for watching the Assembly Language Programming course. We hope that you find this course very helpful to learn Assembly Language Programming. If you feel that this course contributes and enhances your embedded system design knowledge, then go ahead and hit like, share and subscribe buttons. And do not forget to press bell icon to stay updated with every new upcoming video from Electro Educators as soon as it goes up. Electro Educators also offers technical consultancy in following fields. For assistance regarding technical problems, projects and any consultancy, feel free to reach out at our email address electroeducators at gmail.com. Okay, see you in next lecture.